Because some guys just pack up in there. Uh, well, I'll tell you, the nail on the head with that one. That's a great question. And, you know, that's, uh, you know, I turn into the, uh, you know, old, old, the old guy. Right? Oh, back in my day, or, you know, these kids these days, right? I, I know that, you know, everybody seems like every generation says that. But there's a lot of instant gratification right now. I mean, uh, everybody has it. I mean, it's on your hand. It's in your phone. No matter what you're doing, somebody tell me I did something good now. And, or I want my success now. And it's really, really hard. It's not, you know, there was, you, you go back, you know, whatever, 30, 40 years ago, you may not play till you're a junior, you know, or a senior. You go to, you, you'd be on the scout team, you'd redshirt, then you'd be a backup, and so on and so forth. And now, um, you know, there's a lot of things that have changed, and whether it's because of, you know, instant gratification, it's because of the transfer portal, it's because of whatever the reasons these are, um, it's easy for guys to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to leave, you know, and, you know, there, there's there's something to being patient and putting your time in and doing the work. I also think it's guys, you know, Jamari and uh, Blaze, two that I can really, you know, speak intelligently on. You know, they put two years of work in where, you know, some guys I think just say, hey, you know what, I'm going to go uh, join the transfer portal and they kind of just vanish and you never really hear from them again, you know, and maybe they play somewhere else, but maybe they don't either. And it's an easy way to just kind of say, you know what, I'm done with this. You know, I don't want to do it anymore. And uh, it's a little bit more palatable to be able to say that if you say, well, I'm going to, I have this other plan in mind. Now, maybe that plan never comes or, or not. But uh, for those guys to have the, you know, the, the, they stick to it and um, keep working. And they, they do a great job for Zach. I mean, we go down there and Zach and I have a very good relationship. We talk about it a bunch. Those guys work hard at it. And, um, you know, so. Uh, you know, just what we just said a couple minutes ago, those guys are technically kind of still freshmen. I mean, between the COVID year and the redshirt year, and uh, now they're going to have an opportunity to uh, hopefully be able to put a lot of work in for the next four years. And there's some guys in that outside linebacker group that you see with the potential to be impact players on special teams. Yeah, I think those two are a great example um, uh, right off the bat. And then uh, Simon Odie's another guy that's uh, playing the outside backer spot, and um, he's another guy that will have an opportunity. I think those three in particular, I think that um, with Garrett and, and Caleb, those guys are going to have some role on special teams where they're going to uh, contribute. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, you know having all those guys be a part of it in some way, shape, or form, even if it's on one team. Hey, take Garrett and you know you want him on uh, on the punt team or whatever team you Coach Bush wants him on. Then um, you know I think that's uh, they'll, they'll take that role and run with it. And I think John, you mentioned Odie. John Bulk's another guy that maybe they don't have the uh, ideal physical traits to be an impact like starter level player, but. Are those guys like that kind of equipped specially to be impact players on special teams with kind of their physical traits? Yeah, I think John has showed it um, uh, in particular. John Bullock showed that he can uh, he can be a four-core special teams guy. He's got great speed, athleticism, and um, you know he, he's a guy that can really run. So uh, you can do some different things with him in the coverage game, and then strong enough to be able to be a blocker. So uh, I think that uh, you know he's definitely one. Um, you know, the, I think those guys in that in, in that nickel position, um, you know, are kind of you know, really ideally made uh, for special teams, a combination of size and strength. So I think that definitely is something that so they can hang their hat on. So the focus on getting more pass, getting more sacks, getting more QB pressure. Are there certain packages that you may apply on like for a third down pass on your kids or anything? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, with kind of the way that Chins has built this defense, uh, Eric's built this defense, it's third down is really a chance for us to get creative. You know, we can get some, you know, get some different packages out there, get some different personnel groupings and uh, do some different things. And then also, you know, now having the years into the package where you kind of know your first and second down calls and the guys kind of have a good grasp of that. Now you, it'll lead you to, you know, kind of be a little bit more aggressive and do some different things on third down. So that keeps the teaching and the learning part and it keeps the interest level for the guys as well. Any like blitz response becoming? Yeah. Well, you know, you're, you're the, 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 everybody wants to blitz, right? The uh, <laughs> linebacker coach, D line coach, let's blitz a DB coach going, whoa, 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 let's play some coverage. So uh, I think you got to have a combination of both. You got to be able to give, um, you know, give a picture, present a package, and then from within it, you're, you you got to be able to drop seven and have your four man, some sort of four man rush, whether it's a straight rush or games. And then you got to be able to have your blitz package out of it, and then you got to be able to drop eight out of it. You know, try to, now listen, and Coach Whipple will give his uh, talk about the quarterbacks a little bit. You got to be able to confuse those guys, you know, or at least try to. Otherwise, the systems, the schemes, these guys are too smart. They study too much. They'll be able to pick you apart. So you got to be able to show them one look and give them another, um, and then show them the same look and maybe give them something else out of it.
Yeah. Gary Nelson mentioned that with you overseeing the defensive line and the outside linebackers, like communication seems to be better with like the same voice kind of mentality. Have you seen that yet so far, and how could that be an asset going forward? Yeah, I think that Tony and I were pretty close on you know the way we kind of uh, looked at things, and we had a good working relationship, and um, so there isn't too much getting changed, but maybe just a little bit cleaner. And then I think also when they hear in the same room, well, hey, not only do we want you to do that, do this in particular assignment, but this is why, and oh, by the way, this is what the guy next to you is doing, so now you see how the puzzle fits together. Rather than, hey, you do this, and you do that, and then we meet in the middle. You know, Now they kind of understand, all right, he's gonna be doing that, I'm gonna be doing this, now that makes my job a little bit easier. So I think that part of it um, uh, will be good for us moving on. Mike, it seems like you never lack energy. <laughs> well, I'm excited to be here. I'm very, very fortunate. I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones who gets to do something that he loves for a living, so uh, I'm lucky that way. But the, was there a different feel for you as you start spring football with uh, some of the teams on staff? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, it's exciting when, um, you know, for me to be with some, uh, you know, the new players, you know, get, you get to get in with those guys and uh, get to work with those interior guys that either coach when they were freshmen or help recruit and, you know, bring into the program, things like that. So I'm excited about that part of it. And then, um, you know, uh, for, for some of the new coaches, I, I was Coach Whipple's GA in the spring of 1999. So uh, my brother was a captain for Coach Whipple. So uh, we, you know, we, we have a lot of, uh, you know, good good Coach Whipple stories from on and off the field, which are, are pretty fun. But uh, he's an awesome guy. Um, I'm excited that he's here. And uh, he's one of the smartest coaches I've ever seen and in, in, in doing this for a long time. So uh, I'm, I'm excited that he's here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited to get to new, uh, get to know new guys as well. We haven't spent a ton of time together. Those guys have been pretty busy putting in their scheme and stuff like that. But getting a chance to get out and interact with them on the field has been a lot of fun. How many of those stories can you share publicly? Uh, it probably depends on how many, um, uh, you know, uh, beverages we're having or things like that. But uh, he's uh, he's awesome and, and, and has always been a, uh, a very intense coach that's always won a lot of a lot of football games wherever he's been and uh, always had great uh, offensive quarterback play and things like that. So um, he's an awesome coach. You guys are going to love getting to know him. He's, he's very funny. You're going to enjoy his stories, I think. <laughs> Casey's the most experienced guy among those defensive linemen, but obviously he's going to be out for the spring. What, what do you want to see from him? How can he stay involved? What, what role will he play as he recovers from the injury? Yeah, the good thing about Casey's got a super outgoing personality, so it's easy for him to interact with guys. It's easy for him to stay engaged. Um, he, he, the trick for him is going to don't get bored, you know, and, and you have to be there, and it's not going to be as fun. And, you know, I, I've been on when you're not coaching or, or, or playing, those practices tend to seem like they last a lot longer. When you're playing or coaching, they go back too fast. But, um, you know, the big part for him will be just to be able to stay focused, gain the mental reps, watch somebody else make mistakes, uh, make, make mistakes, and then um, make sure that he doesn't repeat them when he comes back. And, oh, you know, we already saw that happen. Uh, maybe it wasn't you, but it was somebody else. So uh, if he can do that and stay focused, um, you know, kind of continuing to learn and at the same time being engaged with the guys. And he's he's such a leader, such an outgoing guy, no matter what. I mean, he could, you know, be talking to a, you know, group of third graders and, and, and he'd be the most popular guy in the room or he'd be talking to some, you know, you know, uh, uh, whatever older older folks or something like that and same thing everybody would want to talk to him and he can hold a conversation with anybody so the guys would you know kind of gravitate towards him and um, he, he's a good guy you know behind the scenes ask good questions and is really engaged in the meetings and things like that so if, if he can do that he'll improve himself this spring how does having some new quarterbacks in the backfield on the opposite side of the ball now going to challenge your players this year yeah I think that with, with with having a lot of quarterbacks, I think that could, that's going to create competition for the quarterbacks. So those guys are going to have to improve their play, uh, otherwise they're going to get passed by. So when you do that, flip side for us now, the quarterback play starts to improve, and you know those guys have uh, built in competition with each other. Um, they're going to get better, and it's going to force our guys to get better. So hopefully that trickles down and uh, has has a has a pretty positive effect on us as far as competition goes, and the way guys train, the way guys work, and uh, you know also with having and, uh, more guys, you have more live arms, so uh, it's an opportunity to get more reps for you know when the guys are doing on seven on seven in the summertime. Maybe it's uh, more opportunities for different groups of guys that maybe wouldn't have got a bunch of reps because quarterbacks can't throw their arm out in the middle of summer, things like that. So um, you know, I think that uh, hopefully it's benefit moving down for all of us. All right.